Usually, big words signify very small specialties. And the quantum electrodynamics is a big word that signifies a very big subject. In fact, it's nearly all of physics. Let me explain a little bit about the history of the problem that uh, we three have gotten a Nobel Prize for. The, it's the adventure of our science of physics that perpetual, is a perpetual attempt to recognize that the different aspects of nature are really different aspects of the same thing. That all the phenomena that you see, the great variety of different things, can all be explained, perhaps, as uh, different aspects of some underlying business or some underlying laws or some underlying simplicity. I have won a Nobel Prize and it is a pain in the neck and it destroys a great deal of the adventure of life for me and it saddens and cuts off lots of things I would like to do in a sort of easy way like a normal human being I didn't see that the publicity would be so terrible. I didn't want it. I knew right away I didn't want it. I tried to figure out how not to get it. But like many other people who have gotten it, uh, and uh, re they realize after a few moments that if they refuse it, it would make more publicity than and if you got it. A big shot he thinks he is, he refuses the Nobel Prize. You, know, you don't want that either. And what I think is the solution to this is that they should at least have the courtesy, I mean the Swedish Academy, when they choose somebody, to call him up quietly and to offer him the prize. And if he doesn't want it, he can then say no, and there'll be no publicity because nobody has been told yet. And it would seem to me a rather simple solution. by someone to, <laughs> she wanted to make a drum, she wanted to make a ballet of purely percussion music. I, mean, I thought that's crazy, you know, I, I thought ballets were like nothing but Swan Lake and so on. And so she designed this ballet and we went up to San Francisco as if it was a regular job, we got paid, we went to rehearsals, we went to the thing. It was an extremely small ballet school. There weren't more than 20 or 30 people in the audience for this whole ballet, okay? But it said on the, on the program, music composed and produced by Richard Feynman and Ralph Layton. So I have composed music for a ballet, okay? Well, it turns out, crazy like always, that she got, won a contest in the United States and then went to Europe with a section of this ballet and some, some dancers, and entered a big European, uh, a European contest in which it ended up with just two contenders. One was a Latvian ballet group with Swan Lake uh, and her thing, and it was in Paris. And she reports that the audience were always applauding more for hers than the other, but that the judges decided that the Swan Lake was better and when she went up to the judges, which is permitted, to find out what it was that was the weakness, they said the music. <laughs> so we were found out, you know, in Paris at last, somebody had enough cultural background to recognize the fakers, right? But that we get so damn far faking it, I, I always find fascinating, okay? Dear Mr. Layton, we have received your letter requesting us to arrange a visit to Tuvanskaya. We regret to inform you that the subject area is beyond in tourist travel routes. Therefore, we cannot arrange such a visit. Sincerely, in tourist, Moscow.
Dear Mr. Layton, thank you for your letter of the 3rd of January. It is a pleasure to welcome you to Tuvan Studies. Your appearance alone must double the number of people in the field. Unhappily, I can offer you very little hope of getting to Tuva. While there is no harm in going ahead and applying for a visa, the obstacles are, in my opinion, insurmountable. It's very simple. I propose to give some lectures in Russia. They would be delighted, I think. I come there and they say that, and I say that one of the conditions is that I travel to Tuva. And they say, indeed, it's fine. And then I say, but I give the lectures in Moscow after I visit Tuva. Having learned a bit, you see? And they'll have to say yes to that. And I could go. I never understood before why I, I don't want to do it that way. And now I suddenly do. The whole idea is to have adventure. The way to have adventure is to do things at a lower level. It's not uh, to ride on the freeway and to stop at the Holiday Inn. All this and more at the world famous San Bernardino Exotic Car Show this Saturday and Sunday at the National Air Show. Learning to sky chill. Learning to sky air temming air chill. We found somehow this Mongolian Tuvan Russian phrase book, which was just wonderful. Kadar chilaranga baran kanchar chidriptarasinem. But now that we had the phrase book, we would write in Tuvan. That would probably wake somebody up, you see. And so we struggle. This is the kind of thing I love, okay? I try to put something together. So we're taking all the phrases and trying to make the minimum changes on any of the phrases of the phrase book so that we would have as few errors as possible. We would be able to put together the phrases in order to say, greetings to your country from ours. We have a great interest in in Tuva and uh, so on, and we hope someday to come to visit, and we would look forward to see you in greetings and good wishes, and, and uh, if there's any way that you can send us tapes of the language, uh, we would appreciate it, all this kind of stuff. And it sounds a little odd that you can make that all out of a phrase book, but actually it was a rather good phrase book and had a lot of stuff, and so that, uh, you know, phono recordings and things like that. Uh, so we wrote this letter into the vacuum, as usual, and nothing happened, and nothing happened. And then one day, Ralph comes running over, waving the letter, a letter in the air. He was so excited he didn't open it yet. The letter had come from Tuva with the stamps, your Russian stamps, but uh, it can come from Kazil, so we opened it. And uh, then, of course, we couldn't read it because it was in Tuvan. We worked very patiently back and forth because we had to go through the phrase book into Russian and then from Russian into English. His name was Undar Dairima. Greetings from Tuva. Kazil is a nice city. You will find we have a statue of the center of Asia. It was very much fun, of course, to, to do that, to discover different ways that they speak and how well, their language works and, and, and so on. And that was our first piece of anything that caught out, came out of Tuva that we received. And that was the beginning of hope. Because it took us a number of years till we got to that stage. <laughs> 